going to take a break from the direct management and use of different chemical control agents. We'll focus a bit on conventional and organic treatments to ask the question, how much is it costing you, this damage and related damages? And so we invited two people to, to lead this part of our, our consortium, Bill Sharapper, who is a cooperative extension agent specialist who's done a lot of work on new crop introductions, as well as Dr. Amugu Bindasami. Um, he's our lead economic modeler to figure out, to put economic reality to everything. And Bill's going to talk about survey. There's a survey from 2013, which those of you that were, attended Homestead and several growers that attended last year and not here this year, what the results would be. And that'll lead to us really asking you to fill out a new survey. So the lunch is never free, by the way. This $40 fantastic New Jersey lunch, which is downstairs, which you're allowed in with, a, with your card, is also allowed in. You're not allowed out of that lunchroom until you, you fill out the survey, by the way. Okay? So without further ado, Bill, it's all yours. Thank you, Jim. All right, I'm glad everybody came back. That's great. So uh, to start off, uh, this is some of our original crew uh, between herbs and ethnic vegetables. Of course, you all know Vermu and Jim and Andy. But I just wanted to mention that especially important in our national survey and elsewhere are going to be the extension people. And in our case in New Jersey, we've got Rick Van Rankin, myself, Wes Klein, and Pete Nitsky. So, uh, these are the feet on the ground, the boots on the ground, so uh, as much as we can get them connected with this uh, basal working team, uh, the better. We had that initial pilot survey in 2013, as the grant called for, and in this preliminary uh, project, the objectives were to develop a basal grower profile uh, in terms of farming and, and their financial situation. Uh, compile some crop production records and their marketing methods, uh, do a, a disease assessment focusing on downy mildew and fusarium, uh, check out the economic effects of chilling injury, and a host of pest management uh, problems, insects, disease, and weeds. It was a very broad, uh, encompassing survey. Uh, we had a wonderful first inaugural meeting in Florida at Homestead, as Jim mentioned, and uh, here we were really impressed not only with the seminar and the talks and the discussions in the conference room, but outside in the field, the uh, incidence of downy mildew was really striking. And, and some of the differences in chemical treatments was uh, quite uh, encouraging. So basically, I'm just going to fly you through uh, what that pilot survey looked like in case you didn't see it. Some fundamental information like uh, address and acreage information was required, uh, how much uh, it cost to harvest, the price they were getting for these different cultivars, what was the cost of production. This was the really detailed technical part, uh, not only the income, but the expenses, both at uh, production and planting, uh, as well as uh, harvest. And there was a host of other questions on marketing, processing, value-added information, and uh, training and extension needs. So this uh, very comprehensive uh, survey was 10 pages long, had 72 questions, and 12 tables. I'm going to try to uh, put some of those results together. Uh, we had 16 participants. Many people sort of declined because of the size of the, <laughs> the survey. But we did get a great response from uh, all across the, the uh, North America, Florida, California, Texas, Washington, Virginia, Jersey, Maine, and Mexico. So that was really good input. That represented almost 3,000 acres of vegetable and herb production, 1,300 acres of basil. And surprising to me, 10 of the 16 responses uh, actually uh, grew organically. Uh, I was surprised at that percentage. I don't know if it's going to continue that way. It doesn't mean the percentage uh, of total, a lot of the organic people also grew conventionally. The main varieties that we saw reported were Nufar, uh, the Genovese types, and Aroma. The disease information, uh, as expected, the major disease problem is downy mildew. And uh, what we saw happening by some of the comments is they actually had to switch their farm sites, go to different fields where they thought the disease pressure would be less, 
and some actually switched over to greenhouse production where they thought they could evade the disease. Uh, the other disease, Fusarium wilt, was maybe moderate to minor, and a host of other uh, problems like Phytophthora, bacterial spot, and nematodes were recorded. Uh, the main organic fungicides are listed here, oxidate, actinovate, serenade, regalia, trilogy, sonata, and neem. Most of them are registered. A few were not. But uh, we've seen the research reports report on a lot more possibilities of registration. Uh, and in terms of the synthetic fungicides, uh, the ones reported were Ranman, Quadris, Ritamil Gold, Actigard, k and Phosphite. So we did get some pretty good baseline information, but where we fell down was the cost of production. All those little details on uh, seed costs, planting methods, it's because there's just such a diversity of basil production in the U.S., uh, ranging from uh, these big, uh, large acreage where uh, multiple sprays, four-row planting, two hydroponics in, in a greenhouse, and you, it's like apples and oranges. You really can't get consistent, uh, replicated information. Uh, and there's a whole host of other uh, potted approaches, uh, live roots, and, and uh, you know this uh, better than I. So we want to continue getting more details of this work. We may do individual surveys in the future to get better cost information, labor, time, varieties, harvest, and, and other uh, inputs there for a crop budget that would be uh, more helpful. So basically, uh, our participants found this pilot survey a little too long and complex. So we will revise that. Uh, the crew has been working hard on revising that and shortly, uh, Ramu will be giving uh, a new revised information. So it's going to be simpler and we're going to try to uh, gather as much comments as we can on a larger, wider distribution uh, so that we can uh, provide our growers and the, the industry w with some economic information. So uh, I don't want to get us too late in time to eat. Just remember that uh, the uh, margarita pizza that I have in the back there with basil, that's the second home uh, for basil. A lot of goes there. This is New Jersey. Uh, why is the basil there? Why is the mozzarella there? Why? Uh, is the uh, uh, red tomato sauce there? It, it represents the Italian flag. So uh, in margarita pizza, the green uh, was put in there for Queen Margarita. And uh, the interesting thing is it represents hope. And I think uh, Basil, uh, we see a lot of hope here by having this team of people together to put their collective thoughts that we may solve this major problem. So uh, we're at the forefront of a lot of changes and uh, we need to keep that pizza and other condiments coming. So uh, thanks for attending uh, 100 years New Jersey uh, Ag Convention here. Uh, without further ado, I'm not gonna take any questions. I'm gonna lead right into remove. Uh, Jim, if you want to 